Optimal health for high performers. This is the Health Upgrade Podcast with Dr. Nawaz Habib. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Habib. Today's 10 minute upgrade, I want to talk a little bit about our mindset for health. What exactly is it that you have in your mind in regards to your current health situation? What is that self-talk? What are the words that you're using, the language that you're using when it comes to your health? I have worked with hundreds of of successful entrepreneurs, high performers, people that have overcome significant health challenges, anything from autoimmune conditions with severe neurological symptoms such as MS to inflammatory bowel diseases. I've worked with people that have had IBS and Crohn's and celiac, uh, psoriasis and eczema. And the common thread that I've found when it comes to the amount of success that somebody has, the the positive outlook that comes from them achieving the change that they notice is their language. The words that they use, the positive reinforcement, the mindset that they have in regards to their ability to be successful in their journey of health. And I have a few specific things that I want to point out that are different in those that succeed when it comes to a health challenge and overcoming their their uh, diagnosis or whatever it is that they've been given, and those that have a little bit more difficulty overcoming that challenge. So the first point that I have here is to stop having a disease. When we use words such as I am diabetic or I have IBS, we are literally creating a situation in which we own the disease. We own the diagnosis, that the diagnosis becomes a part of our identity. And when we have something, we never really want to give it away. It's very difficult to eliminate something that's sitting there, that's been there, that you own. We don't want to lose it. We want to keep it. And so those who are very successful in their journey of creating health improvements, getting to optimal wellness and vitality, they don't own their diagnosis. They don't say, I am diabetic or I have celiac disease. They talk about it as though the diagnosis is just that. It's a diagnosis. It's a label. It's a signpost in the ground telling them that they need to make changes, that there is a path that led them to where they are and that they are responsible for figuring out the path to overcome that challenge. And that it is just that, it's just a challenge. It's not something for them to overcome. The journey, absolutely. I'm on a journey to overcome a diagnosis of type two diabetes, or I'm on a journey to overcome my diagnosis of gout. Let's figure out a different way to say these things. Let's figure out a different way to explain that we have been diagnosed with a condition, not that we have something. So a very, very important piece of the puzzle here is, are you owning the disease or does the disease own you? And when there is an ownership or or this situation is involved where there's ownership that's given to the, de- to the disease or to ourselves to own that condition, then it's very difficult to get rid of it. So that's a really important factor. So stop having a disease, stop owning the disease, start owning the fact that you're on a journey and that whatever disease, whatever condition, whatever diagnosis you've been given, it's just that. It's part of your journey and it's something that you're going to work towards overcoming because your goal is truly to be the healthiest, happiest, fittest version of yourself. So make sure you keep that in mind. The second thing that these successful people do is they realize that not everything is based on their genetics. There's a lot of recent research coming out showing the impact of genetics versus the impact of the environment. And the overall general conclusion is that in chronic health conditions, 
genetics and family history plays a role of approximately 30%. No more. If genetics plays a role of 30%, then where are the other challenges coming from? The reason we go down the path that we do, and the reason that so many other people, so many people have similar conditions to their parents, to their grandparents, the family history tends to go on, does have some rooting in genetics. It absolutely does have a piece of the puzzle, but it absolutely is not the cause of one being diagnosed with such condition. The real defining factor is actually the environment. What we surround ourselves with, external environment and the internal environment that we put into our bodies. This comes from the moment we are born, when from the moment we're born. When we pass through the birth canal, we're inoculated with our mother's microbiome. We get the same bacteria and parasites and virus and yeast that she had. And so the genetic component is one piece of the puzzle, but then we are inoculated with mom's and dad's microbiome. We get their same bacteria. And those bacteria are really important because they play a bigger role in our health than we ever thought possible. Here's a fun stat for you. In our human body, we have between 40 and 60 trillion human cells. And in just our large intestine alone, there are well over 100 trillion bacteria. It really goes to show the importance of that balance the symbiotic relationship that we have with our bacteria and our microbiome, the things that live on us and around us, and the fact that they maintain our immune system. They promote us to be healthy or unhealthy. And that is where the vast percentage of our health in these chronic health conditions truly comes from. It comes from the fact that our environment is interacting with our genetics and that creates the change that then we notice in our diagnoses. So the family history does play a role. The genetics do play a role. But if we go and we blame our genetics, my mom had this, my dad had that, my grandfather had it, then we're essentially giving up and we're giving up the fact that we are responsible for 70% of what else goes on, 70% of the influence of that uh, diagnosis from the environment. It also comes down to stress. What is our stress level as opposed to what it was for our parents and our grandparents, the immigrant stress that they probably went through coming to this country or the challenges that they experienced in building their businesses or the jobs that they were going through. The psychological stress, the emotional stress, the physical stress, the toll that they had to take is different from what we had to take. And so the stress and how we impact and how we respond to that stress plays a much bigger role than the genetics themselves. And that means that we have the ability to be responsible for our environment. It means we have the obligation to then look for that root cause to understand that, yeah, there might be a genetic component to this, but it certainly is not the end all and be all. You don't get a condition because your mom had it. That doesn't work that way unless it's a genetic condition. The last thing that people do that are successful is that they don't play the victim. When we make excuses for an issue that we have, we get to keep those excuses. We get to keep the condition. We get to say, oh, I can't cut gluten because, you know, I love bread too much. Or, oh, it's so difficult to change my diet because, you know, I, I really love not eating my vegetables. I hate the, the way that celery tastes. These are victim mentality excuses. When we make excuses, we get to keep them. We get to keep what the excuse is and what the excuse means and what it's allowing us to do and what it's allowing to happen to us. The key thing that these people do is they take responsibility. They don't play victim. They say, yeah, I get it. 30% was genetic. And I have control over that other 70%. And I'm not going to be here as the victim. I'm not going to sit here and let it happen. I'm going to do something about it. And whether that's doing something on their own, doing the research that's required to figure it out for themselves, 
going out and actually making the effort to find somebody to guide them on their path. That's how real change gets made. That's how we notice real improvement in people's health. It all starts with your mindset. It all starts with the idea that it's not happening to you. It's happening around you and you have control over certain parts of it. And those parts that you can control, you're going to do some work on. I had a wonderful chat with Dr. Shyamla Kiru on a previous episode. And she said the only two things that we can control are our thoughts and our actions. And if our thoughts are that we have a disease, that we are a victim to the condition, that the condition is causing our problem, then we get to own that. And if our actions prove or are in line with our ownership of that disease, that condition, that challenge that we're working through, then we're playing the victim. Literally with our actions, we're playing a victim. So these are the top three things that I notice. And those who actually make a real successful journey to optimal health possible is that they have these three things going. They don't have or own the disease or the diagnosis that's given to them. They realize it's part of their journey. They don't blame their family history or their genetics. They look for that root cause and they look for those environmental triggers that play that 70% role. And lastly, they don't make excuses and they don't play that victim role. This is really important when one wants to optimize their health. They're not going to sit there and let that victim mentality take over. I hope this has been enlightening. I hope you've been able to take something away from this. Oftentimes we'll notice that those around us will own their condition. And please don't force anything on them. Don't, don't sit there and say, you're playing the victim. This is the worst thing you could possibly be doing. One of the best pieces of advice, is I, I, advice I've ever been given was from a gentleman named David Nagel. He has his own podcast, The Successful Mind Podcast. I absolutely love it. And David Nagel said, you're not responsible to yourself. You're responsible only for yourself. You're responsible to others. And the way to help notice or create change in others is not to lecture them, tell them they're doing something wrong, not to show them that the world is going down the tube, not to show them in any other way or to point out their mistakes, but rather to show them through your thoughts and your actions. To live it. To really truly become what you want the world to be. To really truly become the example for those around you. So don't go out and tell people that they're doing everything wrong. Don't go out and point out to them where they need to be better. Show them what's possible. And they will come to that conclusion themselves. It's the whole idea behind Inception. And I absolutely love not only the movie for its action, but the premise behind it. It's about creating the idea that they can do it themselves. That this is possible. I hope this has been awesome for you. Have a wonderful day. I wish you upgraded health. health.